So I have a very weird job. <laughs> I write about money for a living, which really means that I write about happiness. Because what is money if not a tool to get us more of the things that we want, right? And boy, do I want a lot of things. <laughs> Here are some examples of some things that I want. Things that are actually for sale right now on Amazon.com. A 50 foot long edible gummy snake. <laughs> a plastic tongue that you can put in your mouth so you can lick your cat with it. I really want these things. <laughs> I know, right? Ready for sale. It's a bit insane that I want all of these things so badly because I already own so many things. I thought it would be fun last night if I counted all of the individual items that I already own in my house, right? So I started counting every single thing that I owned. And I got to this number, 228, in my bathroom cabinet. <laughs> societies, not the poorest, that where people report the lowest sense of overall well-being. When there is a big gap between what I have and what other people have, when there's a big gap between what I have and what I want, I suffer. I actually suffer. And the thing is that this makes us crazy. That number, 372 billion rand, that is how much money South Africans spent on gambling in 2017. And all of this craziness and this anxiety and this fear, it doesn't come from inside of us. It doesn't happen because we're weak or we're shallow. It happens because the very logic of the economy that we live in was designed around consumption. Producers do a bunch of things to make us feel like we need more than we have. Funny story, in 1902, someone built a light bulb, okay, that has been on for 117 years now. It's still on, it hasn't broken. There's a webcam where you can go and see this light bulb. But in the 1920s, all of the incandescent light bulb producers got together and decided that 1,000 hours was the amount of time that light bulbs should last and that they should break after that. So we, our products are built so that they break. And even if they don't break, products are built so that they become embarrassing. <laughs> there are entire industries designed to make us feel like things we bought in the recent past, even though they might still be perfectly wearable, are embarrassing to still wear. The average Instagram user spends 52 minutes a day on Instagram looking at products, wanting things. And the things that we want, the things that advertising makes us want, often look cheap, right? And the reason that they look so cheap is often because the, the true costs are hidden from us. And if you don't believe me, I want you to go later tonight and Google the term coltain mining in the DRC. And think about it in terms of the cell phone that you replace every two years. And all of this stuff that we buy, it doesn't just cost the earth. It costs us. Because I'm sorry, Marie Kondo, but I can't just get rid of all of this shit, right? <laughs> There's a bookshelf in my house that's filled with linguistics textbooks that I bought in first year university 14 years ago. I haven't opened them since then. And every time I've moved, I've brought these textbooks with me because I have so much invested in my ego 
in the idea of being the kind of person who owns linguistics textbooks that I can't let them go. And I'm like, well, what's the harm, right? It doesn't cost me anything to keep all of the stuff that I've bought. But the thing is, the average South African spends nearly 40% of their budget every month on housing. And let's be honest, what we're housing isn't ourselves, it's our stuff. So if you work a 40 hour week, that means you're spending 109 days every year working to earn enough money to house your stuff. But at least you're not this bad. <laughs> this is the Palace of Versailles. It was built by King Louis XIV, the richest man in the world 300 years ago. He had too much stuff. <laughs> he was a bit sick throughout his entire life. He had gout, diabetes. He also had a very painful condition called a anal fistula, which I encourage you not to Google. <laughs> but I will tell you that that is the surgical instrument that they developed, especially for that condition, in a time before general anesthetic existed. King Louis XIV had six children, and only one of them survived until adulthood. Just by being alive today, all of us have more than the richest man in the world 300 years ago could even have dreamed of. And that's the thing I like to remind myself when I feel this hole in myself between all that I have and all that I want, is that to some extent it's a choice to focus on all the additional things you could buy or to focus on all the things that you already have in your incredibly abundant life.